Hello, my friends. Today we're going to look at trade predicted results of Keynes, which is a Mesolithic uh, hunter gatherer who lived in Spain. In uh, this region of Spain, right here, which is Asturias, which is uh, northern Spain. Uh, this individual lived here. Wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. In the uh, 52nd to 50th century before the Common Era, which is the Mesolithic period. And this individual's. Um, Y DNA doesn't have a Y DNA because it's female, it's a it's a girl, and her mitochondrial lineage is U five A two, very very typical mitochondrial lineage for various Western hunter gatherers. This individual is a Western hunter gatherer, so we're gonna look at this Western hunter gatherer's results with trade predictor. Let's begin. So uh, first, we're gonna start with the national code calculator results. We're gonna see what this individual looks like. And this individual seems to have blue eyes with an amber, amber center ring, which is what they score at 49% likelihood. There is also a pretty significant likelihood of hazel eyes, but most likely this person has um, some kind of an intermediate eye color. Blue eyes with an amber center or hazel, uh, some kind of intermediate eye color is most likely the eye color this individual has. Most likely they don't have blue eyes or dark brown eyes, but intermediate eye colors are all quite possible for hair colors definitely black hair it's very very precise prediction here um hair colors besides black are on improbable for skin color she most likely has light brown skin at 60.8 percent odds there is also pretty pretty large odds for olive skin as well but most likely she has light brown skin um there's quite low percentage odds for white skin or paleest skin there is very very low odds for dark brown skin so western hunter gatherers weren't black skinned you know some people online if you look at the reconstructions that people make um people paint, paint them with black skin tone um that's completely inaccurate they weren't have they didn't have black black skin they didn't have dark brown skin but um they did have light brown or olive skin tone for the most part and this individual indeed has light brown skin tone and for hair texture she's scoring curly hair uh from what i remember cheddar man from from um uh, from britain scored similar results with a minus record calculator he also scored curly hair he also scored i think light brown skin he also scored black hair and he scored hazel eyes as well as the largest group but but this individual is scoring blue eyes with an amber center ring so the um he cheddar man scored hazel eyes instead uh for nose shape she is scoring um rather snub shaped nose than greek 52 percent odds for snub shaped nose and let's look at coloring related variants found in the file so if you look at the col coloring related variants found in the file you see she's got all the blue eye haplotypes in herc 2 uh and bh3 what's surprising here is she has this genotype here in bh2 but uh, only one light color variant here. Uh, that's very surprising because if you if you upload this file to YSEC, for example, they will say that she has brown eyes on the basis of this. Uh, on the basis of this on its own, they will say that this individual has brown eye color. Um, but of course, you have to look at the whole picture. You have to look at the whole HERC2 genotype. Um, obviously, just having one dark variant here in this variation is not enough to guarantee you having brown eyes when you have two light color variants here, two hair, uh, two light color variants and all these other variations that are actually actually linked with this variant right here. All right, moving on. She has one light color variant here in SLC 24A5. Uh, for Eurasians, this is kind of exotic. Um, West Eurasians in general tend to have two light color variants here. Uh, this has to do with skin tone. Um, hair and eye color as well but mostly skin tone so this is very exotic genotype for a european for sure modern europeans pretty much all have two light color variants this variation she's got no light color variants in these vari variations of slc 45a2 this is also very exotic by european standards uh, modern europeans all have basically two uh, light color variants here and she has zero she has no light color variants in these slc 45a2 variants variations uh, very, very exotic genotype. Um, that's how you know this is not a modern European because modern Europeans don't have this type of genotype here. 
She does have a uh, European Hunter Gatherer red hair, pale skin, and uh, ginger hair variant in IRF 4, which is kind of rare in modern Europeans, but is very common in European Hunter Gatherers. And uh, let's see what else. She does not carry any red hair variants in MC1R. Now, I could look at what she scores for um, eye color with Snipper 3. I think it will, I think that with Snipper 3, it will be blue. Despite, it could be hazel, actually. It could be hazel. Because of this genotype, it could be hazel. But I think it will still be blue. Let's see. Let's see. No, it's going to be hazel. No, it's going to be hazel, isn't it? Well, let's see. Oh no, it's blue. Look at that. So Snipper 3 says the eye color is blue. That's interesting. But it's 3.71 times more likely blue than green or hazel. So still, uh, hazel is very close. Very, very close. So, um, yeah. So with Snipper 3, her, her eye color is actually blue. Very, very interesting. But hazel is very close. So let's close that. And let's look at the phenotype oracle. And with the phenotype oracle, the closest phenotypes she scores, and these are the phenotypes that every Western hunter gatherer scores with my tool uh, that I've run so far, uh, including Cheddar Man, including other Western hunter gatherers that I've analyzed. It's stranded, followed by this, which is a basket phenotype, followed by this, which is another basket phenotype. So the closest mixture for her is a mixture of, as you can see, stranded plus basket at a distance of 0 0.697 and that distance is closer than the closest phenotype which is just stranded on its own which is 0 0.778 right so stranded plus basket is closer by 0 0.1 points right yeah actually yeah 0 0.1 points so stranded plus basket is the closest phenotype mixture and what i did to, once I got this information, is I went to facemorph.me and I morphed these two phenotypes, the female version of these phenotypes together to try and estimate what she might look like, what this individual uh, appearance might be like. And uh, this is the picture that I have managed to come up with. So trade predictors predicted phenotype for this individual is this, essentially. Now let's get back to trade predictor and this is going to be a short video. Let's look at polygenic risk scores and we're going to be done there. Uh, for the polygenic risk scores, she scores low for odds of kidney stones, low for odds of buried menodosum, low for odds of hemoglobin E disease, uh, low for migraine, high for lupus, uh, average for gout, uh, average for eczema. Uh, we're going to skip glaucoma. She scores uh, average for polycystic ovary syndrome. She scores average for cataracts. She scores very high for age-related macular degeneration. Let's look that up, actually. Age-related macular degeneration. Right, so for age-related macular degeneration, she has this genotype which is to, the, to increase times of age-related macular degeneration. My tongue is getting all the way messed up. It's tying itself up. She's got all these genotypes that lead to increased odds of AMD. Uh, but she also has two genotypes that lead to decreased odds of AMD. This, I believe, leads to increased odds of AMD as well. So she's got a bunch of genotypes that lead to increased odds of AMD. She's got a very high odds of rheumatoid arthritis. Let's look that up as well. RA, very typical genotype for West, uh, illness for West Eurasians. And she's got one, looks like one variation here, that leads to increased risk of rheumatoid arthritis. Very interesting. Anything else? And another variation here for diabetes, which is the normal risk for rheumatoid arthritis. Very, very interesting. Okay. She's got um, high odds of Tourette's. She's got averages of epilepsy. She's got um, high odds of asthma. So high odds of asthma tells me that she might have some uh, risk. She's, she might have a bad result for the HLA gene panel because that has to do with the HLA gene panel. Uh, she's got a low score for leukemia. She's got a high score for vitiligo. She's got a high score for myopia. She's got a high score for corneal astigmatism. She's got a low score for primary biliary cirrhosis. She's got a low score for stroke. 
She's got a very high score for male pattern hair loss. So she's pretty supposed to male pattern hair loss. Very typical for Europeans and West Eurasians in general to score higher for odds of male pattern hair loss. Um, that's something that affects affects Europeans and uh, West Eurasians more. And um, with my tool, that's something the Europeans and West Eurasians score more. She's got lower odds of atrial fibrillation. She's got lower odds of deep vein thrombosis. Lower odds of cardiovascular issues such as stroke, blood clots, impaired blood flow, heart disease, um, aneurysm, stuff like that. Uh, she's got lower odds of ADHD, which is very good. But she does actually have a risk variant for ADHD in TAC1, which is quite interesting. So actually, let's scroll up a little bit. What does she score for DRD2 panel? She scores lower or intermediate odds for uh, number of dopamine D2 receptors, which is... As expected to score when you have a a a a one allele and talk one. When you have a one allele and talk one, that's pretty much what you're going to score. You're going to score lower for D two receptor sites uh, because of the a one allele. So that also contributes to higher score for ADHD. Uh, she's got average odds for unipolar depression. She's got lower odds for bipolar one. Uh, she's got lower odds for schizophrenia. She's got very high odds for type 2 and, and type 1 diabetes. Wow. Uh, so once again, the, sc the score for type 1 diabetes indicates that there might be some uh, risk variance in HLA. And in fact, there is a risk variance in HLA here. Uh, so that's very interesting. And uh, she's got, looks like, average odds for Alzheimer's and low odds for multiple sclerosis. Looks like she has two risk variants for breast cancer out of 14. Let's look at this up. Let's look up breast cancer and see what risk variants she has for that. Breast cancer. Uh, breast cancer is here. Yes. Okay. So for breast cancer, it's BRCA2. Her risk variants are in BRCA2. Uh, she's got low odds for prostate cancer, so that has to do with the 8Q24 panel. And she scores lower odds of epithelial cancers, very good. Uh, she's got lower odds of glioma or brain cancer, that has to do with this panel. Uh, she scores lower odds of thyroid cancer, that is here as well, that is here. And she doesn't have any risk variance for polycythemia vera in JAK2. And for ketal G and testicular cancer, she's got a heterozygous genotype. Which is good. Heterozygous genotype means lower risk of testicular cancer compared to Europeans in general who are homozygous for the risk for the risk genotype, for the risk allele. So having heterozygous genotype means compared to most Europeans, you are protected from cancer because most Europeans have homozygous risk genotype in Ketal G for testicular cancer. So this is quite good. You see it's two times reduced risk of testicular cancer. That's quite good. Uh, all right, let's move on further. She's got three risk variants for celiac disease out of 10. Uh, no risk variants for GSS, no risk variants for Crohn's, no risk variants for Greifenstein's. One risk variant for Parkinson's, very interesting. That's an uncommon risk variant. And does she have any... She has one risk variant for hypopastasia as well. That's an uncommon risk variant as well. Uh, one uncommon risk variant for Jacob Kurzfeldt disease. That's an uncommon risk variant as well. And we don't see any other uncommon risk variants besides familiar to article or aneurysm. And Hirschsprung and Fabry and Lee from any, yeah, okay, there's too many. So, because there's so many uncommon risk variants that she scores, uh, this tells me that these are all missed calls, right? This is something that's uh, uh, very commonly, very frequently, I have observed with these files uh, because of faulty genotyping, they frequently have missed calls in important variations. And, um, yeah, these are missed calls. These aren't genuine genotypes, and um, th these are simply genotyping errors. So she doesn't really have all these risk variants for like Parkinson's and um, familiar to aortic aortic aneurysm and Fabry and Lifromany. These are just genotyping errors. Uh, so you have to really watch out for these in in these files. Not all of the files have the same high quality chips some of the files are chipped with are are genotyped with low quality chips which lead to genotyping errors so you have to watch out for that um i'm not going to show you the whole um you know the whole breakdown of the 
of the monogenic results all of the all of these panels i'm not going to go over that with you because that's too long and the ret retention rate of the video goes way down when i show that um blood type let's show blood type blood type is most likely type o blood type is most likely type o based on this information one two three four five six seven eight SNPs. based on these eight SNPs, she's got type o blood type that's very interesting um and i'm not going to show you biomarkers I let's glance at them actually Let's glance at the biomarkers. And if we glance at the biomarkers, look like she looks like she has lower levels of vitamin D, higher levels of HD, LDL cholesterol, which is bad, lower levels of HDL, which is also bad, uh, lower levels of glucose, which is good, um, average levels of hemoglobin, higher blood pressure, which is bad, uh, average levels of iron in the blood. Uh, that's very interesting. The score for iron in the blood is a little bit higher than average. Does she have hemochromatosis fat ass? Let's look that up. Hemochromatosis. Yeah, she does carry hemochromatosis variants, yeah. So she's got heterozygous here, and she's got heterozygous here. Yeah, okay. I figured, because the level of iron is a little bit higher than average, so that indicates that there might be a little bit of hemochromatosis variants going on here. Uh, she's got um, average levels of sex hormone binding globulin. She's got average level of red blood cell count in blood. She's got average telomere length, average lifespan. And she's got slightly below average height for expected height. So that's going over the biomarkers and the results. There's also all of this stuff here, which I'm not going to go over. Uh, but once again, I do want to remind you, the description of the video will contain links to purchase the file in 23andMe format. If you want to get this file in 23andMe format uh, for a little bit of money, I sell it on my PayHip page. And the link to purchase that will be in the description. Um, if you want to purchase my trade predictor executable, which allows you to generate reports like this for DNA files, the link to purchase that will also be in the description of the video. I sell that. This is my product that I sell here on this channel. And um, thanks for watching. Goodbye. Make sure you leave a like and share.